Did you know you can catch all the best moments from the show on all our social media platforms? Now, back to the studio with Rob. Welcome back to a Flame Tech Football Friday, everybody. And uh, listen, if you are CFL fans, which that's why you're watching, you're going to love this. Uh, Steve Mazurk is an absolute icon in the Canadian Football League and the business world, too, I might add. CFL All-Star perennially 1973 to 1980. I go into lynch mode when I uh, bring up those old, <laughs> those old times. Uh, well, Frenzy called his games. Yeah. Like you guys go oh, yeah. way yeah. back. Yeah. And yeah. Maz was sort of I'm like, how we, yeah, I you said, how right? are we going to handle this? That's right. And Maz says, well, too. Lynch, can I get into this? <laughs> yeah. He goes, how are we going to handle this? I said, don't overthink it. Clearly, that's not happening. Before, <laughs> before I go down, Lynch, you tell your thoughts on Steve Missouri. Before we get into Football Island, what do you remember about this guy? Because you called us, that was uh, right great, in your sweet spot. Great football player. Made big plays. That's why I loved him. Made the big plays when they had to be made. A Canadian, of course. But he was a great football player. I, uh, that's why I loved him. And uh, A great guy, too. Even better guy. Really enjoyed him. That's and he was on the air. So now he, I've got goosebumps. Heady huh? praise Nick there. <laughs> Heady yeah. praise. Any time yeah. I wanted an area, any, uh, a guest on the air, you were, or you'd come to the station, CKRM and CKCK here on uh, right at the game scene. Um, it was great. Really enjoyed you. It was a tough time there some of those years. A great time the first year, of course, 70 or 96, but uh, what the heck, eh? 76, the heck? yeah. 76, 76. I was So, and Maz, you know, CFL fans across the land know he played in the 70s, but he came back in part of the decade of decadence. You and Jim Hobson took this team to prominence, right? Won two great cups together then, too. Would it 20, be 26 years? Is that what it is? On, you know, in some way, shape, or form of the CFL. So, yeah, not many people can sort of, you know, <laughs> brag about that and, and stand for that. So, yeah, eight years playing and came and back to the Riders. For, yeah, came back to the Riders. Well, and, they needed uh, you and Jimmy. I mean, it was great. We needed him then. We needed a salesman like you. I mean, what a guy to be the sales manager. You know sales inside out, and you know football inside out. So yeah. it was a pretty easy job, eh? <laughs> pretty easy job. And that, you know, man, being tutored by George Reed, you know, going yeah. from playing and, and working for George Reed in the, in the Players Association. Yeah. And then, yeah, getting the call, you know, from you know, Jimmy Hobson to come back and be the executive VP with the Riders. Best team. So I've been on all sides of the ball, yeah. So it's been a, my life's passion for sure. Well, it's important to point out your time with the CFL Players Association because – I think I, I just want to let it out of the bag now because I put that photo of Football Island up on our Instagram and the players are I going nuts. Wow. They're like, what is this? What, what's going on? Palm trees. Like, what is that? It was Maz's idea. <laughs> I came up with the name and people are very excited in the football community. And, and it, right now it's a concept that's an idea. But over to you. Yeah, uh, a concept idea. You know, we all talk about uh, relevance and in and, and the CFL and, and keeping the brand alive and and, uh, and all of that. And um, you know, I you know I, I talked to a lot of people about the current situation, C nineteen, the, the upside down world. And uh, you know, I've talked, had great conversations with Brian Ramsey about this. As, you know, you know as well. And uh, it just seems to me that you know the virtual world is wonderful, I and mean, that's that's great. It grabs the attention of a lot of young folks. But, um, um, you know, I was, I, I was uh, getting dressed one day and I was putting on this belt and, and on, the, on that belt buckle was CFL All-Pro Countdown 1978. And, um, you know, I thought about, you know, that was a great time. It, you, know, you know, in football was the, the golden years for sure in the CFL, I believe. But it was a time when um, th- things were fun, you know, fun as well. And we as a group, uh, we did a, an All-Pro Countdown, at least the Players Association did. And it was East versus West. It was um, all stars and skills competition, live in your face, sweat, blood, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, mixed in with a whole lot of fun. And so I'm thinking, you know, why not today um, to try and get something? Obviously, the season, um, you know, contracted or not, just is not going to happen. It did, didn't happen. But maybe, just maybe, there's an opportunity to um, get in the face of fans again in a live, relevant way. Um, engage with them, see our stars pitting their, um, p- p- you know, you're pitting their, their all, all their pluses against others. You know, be it one on ones or, um, you know, sprints or li- you know, lifting weights and you know, two twenty five like we do in the combine. But put it on film, get back in the face of CFL fans. And so yeah, I've been sort of pitching and chatting away about um, a skills competition, and let's. Try you know a made for tea skills competition, um, produced, um, packaged, and Aired. bring something. Yeah. yeah, bring something to us in January and February in lead up to what will hopefully be a great 
21 seasons. Well, it is funny because I before you got here, I, well, apparently you were in the lobby. I didn't know. I was in the lobby. But yeah. you, like, the 70s were awesome, but it's 2020 now. It was your concept of microchip footballs where we could legitimately get a speed and accuracy. But to take the technology of now with those skills from the past, man, it's a win. It is a win. And, you know, those conversations come from conversations I've had with people that, you know, my colleagues over the last 10, you know, 15 years. Uh, sitting down with, you know, my good friend and, and football producer and, and, and skills guy extraordinaire, you know, Bill Wright with Rough Riders. And so we're talking about how we somehow uh, go to an island, go to a, you know, a hub city. How does that look? You know, what does that look like? How much does that cost? Um, and so it's guys that are a whole lot smarter than me that say, you know, with, with technology, uh, with Zoom, with, you know, the virtual nature, there's cameras everywhere. And so if you can't get stars um, that are you know, residing in the United States right now, you can bring um, that competition, that level of competition um, to the screen through your iPhone, through cameras such as what you've got here. And so um, the fact that Island is great, a hub is great, um, but sometimes there are obstacles in getting people in the right place. But that can be overcome. And so when you talk about um, different aspects of the game that we never had way back in the 70s, and that's measuring a hit, um, you know, measuring velocity, um, you know, chipping a helmet, chipping a football, chipping a, you know, a, you know, a blocking bag. And so all of a sudden, all those things that people crave for during an NHL All-Star game, uh, NBA basketball game where they're doing the, you know, yeah, they love dunk. it. They absolutely <laughs> they love, love it. it. <laughs> and so I really think that this is something that um, I, you know, I hope um, you know, the CFL embraces something like this. Maybe they're already talking about it. In, in which case, great. Um, I haven't heard a whole lot, and so I'm chatting about it. Roddy, you're always talking about it. You're a great fan of the CFL. Frenzy, you got frenzy here to just you know, prompt you. Um, so um, I hope. Those types of ideas are, are on the table, and I really hope the CFL, um, mixed with the CFLPA, mixed with TSN or others, um, put a package together so our fans can see blood, sweat, and tears. Is that a long answer or what? No, it's I'm glad. A breath, it's what perfect. a breath, man. <laughs> Sorry, fantastic. Lynch, what do you think, Lynch? I think it's fantastic. <laughs> I see if they're a uh, player, NFL player, or CFL player, Island. I mean, I think that'd be fantastic. Really fantastic. I hope you do it, guys. I hope it isn't all talk and no action. No, it's not. I'll start hounding you. You know that. <laughs> I had to get it done. That's good. So you got to have a fire it's under a, your butt, right, to keep um, it going? John be, uh, John in Edmonton's watching, and he says, uh, I think it'd be great, Steve. Do a CFL All-Star Game and Skills Competition every year. Doesn't have to be during the Grey Cup and hosted in a different city every year. If the NHL can do one, why can't the CFL? And I agree. And TSN's the first network that you think about, but maybe it's not TSN. Look at the channel that we're on right now, Game Plus Network. It's all about gaming. You know, you, I know, you know they'd what? be excited. You know, Roddy, you know, I told you the story about some of the fun things you can do. You know, I'll never forget um, sitting down with Dieter Brock, you know, Winnipeg, great L.A. Rams. And, um, and listening to that jabber between Ron Lancaster and Dieter Brock. And it was actually uh, Ron Lancaster who um, taught Dieter how to read defenses the way wow. you should be reading defenses. And because up until that time, and Dieter had a few years under his belt, and he just pitched the ball because he was so damn strong. He could put the ball anywhere and throw into defenses, into triple coverage, you know, double coverage. And it wasn't until I listened to that and I saw that dynamic of Ron Lancaster, Dieter Brock. And it wasn't, it was, and then Dieter's career just went to the moon and then he ends up in LA. But um, part of the fun competition, and I told you about that. <laughs> We, we were looking for you know an arm wrestling representatives from you know from the west. We had a we had a lightweight. We 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 had a a middleweight, but we didn't have a real good heavyweight. And so we went to Dieter Brock, our quarterback. <laughs> yeah, he's 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 five eleven on yeah. his tiptoes. Tough guy, but strong. And we said, Dieter, you got to be a representative for the heavyweight. He says, Mass says I'll break my elbow if I do <laughs> arm wrestling with a heavyweight. And we talked to him and talked to him and talked to him. And he said, Yeah, I'll do it for twenty seconds. And so at about 14, 15 oh, oh, oh. seconds, he realized that this was his, and he just put, you know, put him down. And it was just jubilation. It, <laughs> it would have gone nuts. But yeah. you know what? Fun stuff like that. And people talk about all-star games. I'll never forget it. another conversation we had with Warren Moon. Uh, Warren had uh, you, you know, just been um, drafted to go back you know, you know, to the States, play in the World Football or, or 
or NFL. Or didn't he go to straight to Houston? Straight, straight to Houston. Yeah. And so this is in the off season, and we call Warren to play in the CFL All Star game, and he says, "Guys, he says I." Wow, I got everything to lose and nothing to gain. I could twist my ankle. So we right. convinced him to come up and, uh, and play a little bit. And he came up, played a full half, tucked the ball, ran, threw, threw everywhere, and did it all. But that's what the CFL is all about. That kind of passion, that kind of belief, that kind of um, you know, respect that those folks have uh, for the CFL game. And they'll do whatever it takes for their fellow players. Uh, for the association. And that's why he came up, right? And that's yeah. why he came up. Yeah. And, um, and getting those guys together. So it would be a great flashback, great interviews, I think. But maybe the heck with the 70s. Let's get current. But anyways, it's a dream. It's a lot of fun. And it's just nice being in your studio, Ryan. It's I'm not screaming. <laughs> yeah, no lynches. Bruce Simpson uh, from Edmonton. Bruce is watching. You know Brucey. He says, great idea. And anything Maz is involved in will be a success. Better than the dark winter months. <laughs> We're going to take a time out and come back with more viewer takeover because you haven't seen Maz, but there's a ton of questions coming in for you. So we'll do that. A CFL icon right here, a Hall of Famer, uh, Steve Mazurk and John Lynch. We'll be right back with the RP Show on Game Plus TV Network, Facebook Live, and listen live at rodpeterson.com. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.